Step parenting. It's a journey that often seems overwhelming and confusing to a lot of people, whether they're just watching it or they're actually living it. It's a delicate balance of introducing the new and honoring the established, and it can result in a loving and blended unit that you'd never know wasn't a unit to begin with. Today, we talk about step parenting, specifically step parenting after grief. And this will be one of a few episodes we'll have throughout this season that discuss what I like to call families of the heart. I'm Ariana Bradford, and this is the Niam Project Podcast. everyone, as I've mentioned, I'm Ariana, and this is the Niam Project Podcast. If you've listened before, welcome back. And if you haven't, thanks for checking us out. So before we get started, uh, did I mention I was writing a book? Because I'm writing a book. It's slated to come out spring of next year, and it's a collection of swear-filled very honest essays about things that moms out there need to hear more. I'll keep you guys updated periodically here, but if you want to get updates more regularly, feel free to sign up for our newsletter on our website at wearenayam.com. There will be news and updates on it there. Also, to those of you who are already on the newsletter list, I promise I'll get more regular at those things. Anyway, let's get started on today's episode. So, as I mentioned, step parenting is a machine with many moving cogs, and there are so many things about it that need to be finessed and adjusted. It takes dedication, love, and patience. My guest today, Susan Nelson, knows more than a thing or two about that as she entered her life as a step parent under some pretty intense circumstances. I'm pretty much a stay at home mom, although I run a couple of businesses from my home, so that's a little bit about me. We have five children together, so um, how that works is that my husband was widowed, so I really inherited three children when I married him, and then we've added two uh, since that time, so we have two children together. And so my kids right now range in age from being 29 all the way down to 11. No, 12, just turned 12 last week. I'm gonna, it's gonna take me a while to get used to that. I've been married to my husband for uh, 16 years, but back when I was 21, um, my brother's wife passed away and he lived across the country from me. Um, He was in a mining community, which is what we live in now. It's um, really crazy schedules and so forth. And he had a a nine-year-old, a three-year-old, and a nine-month-old. And I am much younger than him. So I was 21. He's 17 years older than me. I didn't really know him because he had, you know, gone west when I was really young. But uh I was the only member of our family that didn't really have an established path. So I ended up moving from Minnesota and coming out to Nevada to live with him and help him raise his kids. So that was kind of my first experience with A, stepping into a grieving family situation with grieving children um, and a spouse who had, you know, lost someone, so a widow. And um, that was interesting because his mother-in-law and her husband lived with us as well. So it was a really odd dynamic in our home. Um, And I did that for nine years. So basically spent my 20s helping out my brother, um, helping him raise his kids along with his mom and that dynamic there. And then I met my husband online, actually, and it was kind of as a result of that he had Uh, seen some stuff about me that I had posted about my situation and he just reached out to me to say your brother's really fortunate because uh, you know my kids are spread all over the place um, after my wife passed away so I long story short we ended up together he moved from Colorado here to Nevada where I live 
And um, so I stepped from that family into this new situation with these other kids. I came in when um, his girls were in the neighborhood of nine to 11. And then he had a son, <clears throat> Dakota, who's our son, uh, who is uh, severely developmentally delayed. So he's he was five at the time, but he uh, had about the mental capacity of, of someone who's about 17 months old. And he's 22 today and has that same mental capacity. So um, there's just, you know, there's a lot of different layers there of all of the things that play into uh, my life as a, um, a stepmom, if you want to call it that. I don't really refer to myself as a stepmom, although I guess that's technically my title with them. Uh, but really, I'm their mom. They're, there's not another mom in the picture. Susan isn't in any way shy to talk about how things were complicated in the beginning. So if you're coming here in hopes of hearing how to make it less complicated, it doesn't sound like there's a way to do that. Sorry. What we can promise you, what Susan hopes those of you in this situation will understand, is that it's completely normal to deal with growing pains, as it were, when you first come together. I would say that there were definitely good times and more difficult times, hills and valleys, if you will, um, throughout our entire relationship. I mean, there was great times even in the beginning um, and throughout, and then there were challenges. Uh, I think because we were committed to love each other from the beginning and to figure it out that we knew in our hearts the entire time uh, that there would be there would be reconciliation even throughout the hard times. I mean, and now clearly they're uh, they're the two older girls are both married and live on their own. I have four grandchildren and another one on the way and we're close. Um, they still live in, um, you know, in proximity to us. And so we spend time together, but you know what? There's still, um, there's still things, I think any relationship, right? There's things that come up that, you know, we're different, we're completely different people. And so just learning to um, respect that uh, in each other is super important to the relationship. And I would say too, that probably if anyone is coming into a new relationship with kids, whether there's a recognized grief situation or not, those children are grieving. So they're either grieving a loss of the, a family nucleus that they thought would be their family nucleus forever um, in a situation where they're coming from a divorced parent situation. Um, if they're coming from um, it, an adoption situation or a foster situation or, or any of those kinds of things, even if that has happened when they were infants, you know, the body has this incredible way of understanding uh, trauma and grief, even as far back as the womb. So there's there's definitely things that need to be recognized and um, worked through in some form in any relationship. Um, and especially, you know, if you're coming into children that you weren't their birth parent, like um, if they're coming out of a relationship and coming into your relationship, they are probably coming with some form of grief anyway. There's a completely different dynamic when you're stepping into children who are already established in any kind of situation, whether that's relationships or even just lifestyle and schedule um, and how things work. In my situation, there's another added layer because I was stepping into a situation in both of those times with, with children who had lost a mom. And so, and we're making big changes so not only did they lose their mom, then there was about a year's time before their dad and I uh, got together. But then, so when they did that, they moved from Colorado to Nevada. So there was a lot of changes for them. They were essentially coming into a situation um, in a community that they didn't know anyone uh, into a home, you know, situation where they have this uh, stepmom who they didn't know really well because we had a long distance relationship. Uh, he moved here in July and then we were married in October. 
So really, we had a couple of months of I'm still living at my brother's house and then uh, stepping into their life. So it's 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 very different. Um, the relationships are different. I would say I can speak because I have birth children. So for me, and this may not be for everybody, but for me, um, with your birth children, the the moment I held them, I had this incredible love for them. And with my uh, with my other children, it was a love that had to grow on purpose over time. I had to be intentional about building those relationships and they had to be intentional back. And I think in general, if children are in a good situation that they're born into, um, they also have that automatic love for this person who is their caregiver. Um, who's raised them. Now, I, you know, I can't speak for people who are adopted from birth at that, you know, if that immediate relationship is there, you know, from the beginning. I just know from my experience that it was a completely different uh, stepping into that relationship. Now, I don't have step parents. I'm not a step parent myself. But from what I understand, there is often a fear when things first start out that you'll do one thing wrong and the kids will hate you forever and the next thing you know you're the evil stepmom of legend. Here's what you have to realize. As with any parenting gig, you'll need to be kind to yourself and open to learning because you're gonna make mistakes. I made so many mistakes as a mom stepping into a relationship when I married Carl he was essentially like my first boyfriend whatever you want to call he was my first romantic relationship and so it, that's kind of a whirlwind in itself but you're doing that with spectators right and responsibilities when you're stepping into a relationship that already has children in it and here I am trying to you know be in love and develop a love relationship with this man alongside his children. And so I am not maybe intentionally, but I'm kind of maybe selfish in that regard that I'm wanting to have this time. This is, you know, I'm planning a wedding. It was for us even though I'm including the girls and even my nieces and nephews that I had raised in this whole process, I did not realize what I was doing in making those changes. A, leaving the home of the children that I had been with for nine years, and then stepping into this new relationship, I, I did not put the time in um, to those girls. I was really focused on trying to develop this romantic relationship with this man and figuring like, okay, if we have a strong foundation, the family thing will just kind of come along the way. What I didn't realize was that, you know, the time he was spending with me meant that, you know, he was still working. So that was time he was spending away from them. So looking back, I would say that's definitely something I would be more on purpose about making sure that I was protecting the relationship between the father and the children um, coming in as a step parent, that I wasn't so focused on myself and, you know, my needs or what I wanted um, in this new relationship that I was in. The day of the wedding, you know, after the all the ceremony and everything else, we were pulling away. I fully understood in that moment the decision that I had made and um, and even understood that there would be repercussions for that. I mean, that was probably the happiest moment of my life alongside the most brokenhearted moment of my life, all wrapped up into one. And I think sometimes when you're stepping into a new relationship or even you're adopting a new child or whatever it is, I think you're so wrapped up into the emotion and the joy that you have for these new things going on, these new relationships, that I think sometimes you don't really fully take into consideration all of the other moving parts. Susan's experience has taught her quite a few things. And while she'll be the first to tell you that she'll always continue to learn, she does know of a couple tools that she hopes will help those of you who may be learning how to navigate a blended family. Time. 
would be probably the biggest tool. Um, that along with, I'm a faith-based person, so leaning heavily into that, uh, you know, was, was certainly helpful for me and the tools that came with that. Um, and, you know, the, obviously we were, so all of us were, you know, we shared the same faith. So having that in common, um, was a big thing for us. So, so whatever that common ground is for some people, maybe that's a, a faith situation or maybe that's something else, but finding that, um, common ground and building on that, asking for a lot of forgiveness, um, was definitely a huge part in working through those things, recognizing the places where I had made mistakes maybe, and being really on purpose about going to them and saying, hey, I, I'm really sorry that I did not recognize this. When I moved in um, to the house here, you know, it was a, it was a new house to all of us, um, but they came with things that were from their mom and that was hard for me uh, because it's difficult to be a second wife from somebody who's passed away just in the sense that you're you're not living in comparison to someone who the spouse has chosen to leave or the children have chosen not to live with. You're living against a, a ghost, essentially, right, of someone that they wouldn't have chosen to end that relationship with. Um, so that just carries its own set of stuff. So in trying to develop myself as this new role, um, you know, I didn't recognize or maybe it was hard for me to see, you know, pictures of um, their mom around the house or um, things that had belonged to her. So my own insecurity about myself and this relationship and my relationship with them, um, I think I probably needed to put that as the adult in this situation. <laughs> I probably needed to put that more on a back shelf. So once I realized that, coming into a place where I gave them the space to say, you know, if you have these pictures in your room, that's great. And being able to talk to them about this woman who had, who they clearly loved, who had uh, passed away. And um, the head came with a ton of personal growth. Um, you have to be um, confident in who you are uh, in order to be able to be good for anyone else. And that's in any situation, parenting or otherwise. Um, so just, you know, definitely developing myself, leaning into my faith, seeking forgiveness when it was necessary, developing boundaries and talking about um, how things were going to function in our home, but also taking into consideration um, how they were feeling about different things and just recognizing that giving them a voice was really important. Time, you know, is such a healer of many wounds and it was in our case for sure. Um, and just hanging in there, you know, there was some tough times um, throughout the girls' teenage years. Uh, being this step parent who you feel like, you know, do they have that instinctual bond to you? I don't know, but then you're dealing with all of the um, teenage angst and maybe some rebellion and also some carried over grief in my situation that was coming out um, in them seeking uh, love and attention in all the wrong ways from all the wrong places. <laughs> so um, just really trying to stay um, uh, stay constant to what was important to me, the standards I had or whatever it was, but also um, allowing you know that time. I think it's so important not to like once you've said wow i forgive you for that or um we're going to move on from this situation that you that you really um emotionally do you're not allowing all of those things to like hang over the relationship we still obviously remember that those were a difficult that was a difficult time in our relationship but um we we choose to look at like that was such a growing opportunity for us so trying to find the positive um, in situations too is really important. In the end, a family isn't just about blood. It's about love and connection and forgiveness. It's about support and feeling at home with the people who surround you, no matter where you may be. Building something so important can take time and strength, but in the end, it's worth it. 
both for you and for the hearts of the family you've gained. The Nyam Project Podcast is produced by me, Ariana Bradford. You can find out more about Susan by following her on Facebook under the name Susan Volkert Nelson. Volkert is spelled V as in Victor, O-L-K as in Kilo, E as in Echo, R-T as in Tango. And you can keep track of new projects by following her family at The Created Life Collective, also on Facebook. You can find out more about the Nyam Project at wearenyam.com or on Facebook and Instagram under the name The Nyam Project. Thank you again to Susan for giving us her story today, and we'll see you again next time. 